Hi, this is Donald Klein with Cube Conversations coming to you from our Palo Alto studios. We're here doing a special series on CMOs and the challenges of digital marketing. And today we're here with Peter Smales, who is the former chief marketeer at Datas.io. Welcome, Peter. Thanks for having me, always fun to be here. Good. Good, well look, so wanted to kind of set aside this time and have a discussion with you because you're somebody who's had a long marketing career, you've been in big companies, you've been in small companies, most recently with Dados. Mm -hmm. uh, you've been in companies where you've had established brands with you know, proven product stories, and then you've also been in situations where you've got companies that were sort of unknown to the broader yeah. world, and you had to find out a way to kind of make them known and prove out that value proposition. Put them on the map. So Put speak. them on the map. So why don't you talk, talk to us a little bit about kind of how you've approached those, that challenge when you've been in some of the smaller companies. Sure, sure, happy to do that, yeah. and, and uh, yeah, my past has been an interesting mix of big companies and small, and, and uh, the small companies present a, a bunch of unique challenges, but it's super, there's nothing more fun than having the opportunity of having a company that's got some great technology, some great people, and essentially the, you know, the, the fun job of any marketeer is to, how do you put those, how do you put them on the map? And we've been talking a lot about, you know, sort of what are the levers you can pull? You know, what, what, what can you do? And one of the challenges with being a small company is you don't have any money. Mm. Or, I mean, you might, but you don't, you don't have a ton of money. So that's where social, right off the bat, if I sort of look at the levers you can pull initially, when you look at your strategy, it's like, okay, I need to put the company on the map, so I've got to drive thought leadership, I've got to drive awareness. You know, I've also got to drive demand gen. So what are the levers that I can use? What are the vehicles that I can use to drive that? And I think that's where social has, uh, a lot of people think of social as it's sort of the new demand gen vehicle. I don't necessarily see it that way. I think social has actually become an ideal complement to all the other traditional levers that you still want to use. And again, there's segmentation that comes into this as well in terms of what, what organizations you're trying to, to target. Are you going after SMB? Are you going after the enterprise, et cetera? And in my case, it's primarily been going after the enterprise. Mm -hmm. So when I look at that from a social standpoint, social media in general sort of is a, the, the value of it is really as a complement to the other traditional levers that you have in your arsenal, whether that be you know events, industry events, um, whether that be you know traditional demand gen things, outbound yeah. type things, yeah. social becomes an ideal complement for promoting those things, and then social also becomes a very important pillar in the sense that it removes sort of the barrier to entry in terms of being relevant, okay. if you will, because it creates it's a it's a very cost effective way of creating a drumbeat. Yes. Of news. And again, we can get into more specifics of the different aspects of that, whether mm -hmm. it's traditional social, like the Twitters, whether it's videos and that type of things, the, the, the different pieces you can use in there. Okay, so but now talk a little bit about the role of events. Okay, okay. so you talked sure. about so some, one of the challenges with, the, with the, the smaller companies, you don't have the big event budgets, you don't have the big booths, yep. but still now you say, well, digital, you've often hear some companies talk about how we're going to try and go all digital. We're yep. going to, you know, because that's, that's, uh, uh, that's a place where we can play because even if we don't have the, the money. But, you know, digital is a crowded space, right? Yep. So did you, how, did you strike a balance between events and digital? What was your thinking? That's a great question. And, and balance is exactly the right word. It's going to vary. There's no sort of, uh, there's no exact science, but um, you have to be selective, again, going into an enterprise clientele, you have to be selective about the events that you're going to do, mm -hmm. number one. Digital is digital is a very good instrument, particularly as a small company, and this is a point I didn't make before, the whole notion of inbound versus outbound as well, where digital uh, can play a very key role from an inbound standpoint is with you know, just things, simple things like SEO, you know, um, and SEM. Can people find you? you yes. Know, are you relevant? Uh, you know, the early adopters are the people that know they have a problem. So they're going to look for something. So you can very cost effectively find, you can make yourself relevant there if they yeah. know what they're looking for. Right. And particularly if you're, that's what's fun about creating a segment is if you're doing something nobody else is doing, then you're playing in a potential blue ocean where you're not competing at a very high cost, you're not bidding at very high cost for some of the things you do from say a Google AdWords or that type of stuff. So you've got the, your okay. ability to be effective from an inbound standpoint is number okay. one. To your point about the events, you absolutely, need to do those events. Um, your core set of whatever whatever segment you're in or whatever business you're in, um, you've got to be focused on those core events because I still find that to be um, 
that's where a lot of yeah. enterprises don't, they, they still use events as one of the key places they go to learn, to educate themselves, to find out what's happening in the marketplace. Yeah. Um, the key is, how do you maximize your presence at those events? Okay. How do you leverage social to promote the fact that you're going to be there? Right. You know, what do you do at the event? What can you do? And again, this is where we can come back and yeah. talk about things specifically like the Cube. Right. You know, where you can use vehicles like the Cube very effectively because one, I can drive a lot of influence in show, but then as well I can create a much longer tail. I can maximize my presence, yeah. I can maximize yeah. what the IP that I bring to that show by capturing that in digital yeah. medium like video and then being able to use it post, you know, okay. sort of, you know, simply put, you go to a show these days, you know. If you're not on the cube, then you know, you're missing the boat. I mean, it's like it's just sort of like a regular pillar of all the core industry shows. Interesting. You know, and so that's great for driving influence not only to customers but within the industry. But then it also is a great way for creating assets that I can then use for longer tail for thought leadership or for demand gen or whatever I may want to use. Okay, understood. Understood. So let's let's talk a little about this notion of complement. So what cool. you're saying was is that so you, you want to go to the events. Mm -hmm. That's where the belly to belly interaction is. Right. That's where things are happening, yep. right? And then you're using social to 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 leverage up your presence at those events. Correct. Right? Okay. Or, so, or promote the fact that you're going to be there. Mm -hmm. Drive interest in people showing when you do a contest or there's you know there's creative things you can do. But yeah, you're using social to basically drive awareness to the fact that you're going to be there. You're using social to promote you're in a session, you're on the cube or whatever it is you might be doing. You're hosting an, an event that evening, a, you know, an yep. offsite event at that. Use that as a way to complement the fact that you're at the event doing. Your belly to belly, yeah. great term, just doing your traditional yeah. belly to belly get together. Okay, I understood. Because we've, we've heard people talk about to say that, look, you know, social's great, digital's great, but it's also very crowded out there. Yeah. And where you've got people's attention, where you've got people's mind share is in and around events. Yeah, I would agree with that. I would agree with that. And it's, you know, social is a great way of, it removes the barriers to entry, mm -hmm. but the flip side of that, for good or for bad, is that it also creates a lot of noise. So how do you yep. separate the noise? How do you rise above the noise? Yeah. I and mean, that really is leveraging social, leveraging digital overall in the appropriate high credibility, high integrity ways to drive influence within the industry, to drive relevance of what you're doing, and then also use that as a vehicle for helping on the demand gen side. So it's sort of, it's the new normal. Yes. You know, kind of thing. It's not the ideal platform. It's not the social per se. It's not the ideal, demand gen platform, um, but it is, it is a complementary piece, but it also, to your point, creates a tremendous amount of noise, so then the challenge becomes, yeah, how do you, how do you basically stand above the noise? And, and okay. that comes down to influence, and that comes down to credibility. Okay. You know, are you yeah. telling a credible narrative? Are you talking to credible people? Are you in the appropriate forums? That yeah. type of thing. Okay, and so, so let's talk about video and how that kind mm -hmm. of fits into that and have, fits into that digital strategy, right? Because that's kind of the new realm in terms of everybody wanting to kind of create uh, con you know, digital content yep. in video form. What's been your experience in terms of like the challenges of creating that content and then getting it out in digestible forms? Hmm. Well, there's the, it, it's getting, it's a couple different aspects to that. The creation of content is getting Depends on what you're trying to accomplish. Okay. Um, the creation of, of video content's getting easier, if you will, in the sense of the cost of, you know, you can, you can put a, a studio and a small business together reasonably and expensively, but then you're sort of, then you're operating, what, what content are you creating there? Well, the content I'm creating there is essentially, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to promote what right. we're doing as a company, you know, we're going to mm -hmm. go, we're going to mm -hmm. create some short little blurb about the recent launch or something, or we're going to potentially have a customer, although typically you'd have a customer, you know, you'd go visit the customer yeah. and, and do it there. Um, but that's the, that's the, that's the stuff where you're sort of the self-promotional stuff, mm -hmm. you know, the, where I find the events in particular, what you guys are doing with the Cube and Silicon Island, what I like about that is that the content that I'm creating is, um, it's not sort of a pre, it's, it's by no means sort of a pre-canned, you know, sort of has a black and white beginning and end. It's very topical, it's very soundbite-ish in a good way, yeah. not a bad way, if you will. Yes. Um, and it's also very topical, yeah. very topical, and which, is, yeah. which is key because again, back to the whole influence, it's not just about hammering away at the customer. Hey, look at me, look yeah. at me, look how great I am. It's basically, you have to build a community, you have to build an ecosystem, you have to build a community of people that know you, that trust you, 
And we talked earlier about the whole earned versus, you know, earned media uh, versus paid media. You, know, you build that credibility, you build that influence. It's like, hey, you know, saw you on the cube. You know, get an email from you know Fortune or Forbes. Like, oh yeah, I saw you on the cube. You know, we'd be interested in doing that, this, that, and the other thing. And it all comes down to building that arsenal, if you will, or that that uh, that library of high credibility, high integrity, high influence content, which is all video based because I mean, video is just that's the way people consume information. So I think we'd agree with you, right? You know, having you know content which is based on authentic interactions, you know, right. between you know between a vendor and his customers, between vendors and partners, yep. between vendors yep. and analysts, right? That's really the key to, to making good, engaging content. Yep. Now, what about in terms of how how do you find in terms of getting that content out to, to individuals uh, in a way that is kind of consistent with way con people are consuming content now in social media? I, I think we're we're seeing you know, there's a whole debate out there versus long form versus short form content, yeah. clips, et cetera. <laughs> what, what, what's been your experience? I don't know the number, but I'm quite certain that the average attention span of people in general is dramatically down. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know exactly what the, but there'd be an interesting metric on that. Um, so the world leans absolutely heavily towards, as I said earlier, sort of more soundbite. Oriented, but not soundbite in a bad way. It's yeah. just sort of the world is. I mean, look at the, just look at the landscape we live in now. Yeah. It's like you know, we, until recently we lived in a 140 character world, kind of thing, and you, you can convey a lot more through spoken word than you can just you know typing. And but people consume things in very short bursts of information. Um, that's so one. You want to take advantage of that. Two, the other thing I would say to this is that I like, one of the things I like about short form video is again, because you've, I'm a big metadata guy. And mm -hmm. so like in one five minute, like just in the conversation we're having now, we've covered like you know, eight different topics. Right. So to me as a marketeer, I'm like, okay, great. That's eight different things That's eight that different I could clips. Be, yeah. you know, kind of thing. Great. And I can use that for any number of different things that I want to use. One, one of those pieces that maybe was the part about, so what are you doing now? Maybe the plug part could be, mm -hmm. uh, we can promote that. That could actually be a demand gen thing. Or you know, okay. if you're talking about a segment where you were just like, you know, how are you guys uniquely differentiated? Well, you could use that in consideration. Okay. You know, there's, there's all different ways, but the notion of sort of highly granular um, video content has huge value. Interesting, okay. It just so, creates a lot of leverage. So if we're just going to kind of, you know, we're, this has kind of been a blocking and tackling for yep. marketeers kind of conversation. So if we're just kind of sum up your main points here. So one, you were saying, use social to complement your presence at events and other types of- And all, of, all your, not just events. I mean, use it as a way of, of supporting dimension. Use it as a way to being, staying relevant. Yeah. You know, join all the appropriate communities you need yeah. to be joining. I mean, you yeah. have to stay relevant. You have to stay, you have to stay within the noise. Yes sort of as the table stakes. Yes. And then beyond that, then you got to figure out, okay, how do you rise above yeah. the noise? How do you use it strategically to actually rise above the noise of everybody else just banging away on social as okay. well? Okay, all right, agree with that. Second point then, you know, use authentic content, right? Absolutely. Try to Try to try to mix in the, the you know, relevant people authentic can, content. People can very quickly, people are tired of just talking heads. People are yeah. tired of just, I don't need to see another video on how great you yeah. are, you know, or whatever. So back to your point, that's my interpretation of authentic content. Like. Do what you do. Yes. Share what you do. Yes. Put it in context, and smart people will figure out, you know, and then and then obviously share yep. it in the appropriate community so yep. that people can find it. But they very naturally gravitate. I think there's a very low appetite now for BS because there's so much noise. Yeah. Okay. People are so hungry for just getting to the relevance of the information they want, which again is also where the soundbite level stuff, and the more you can index and be intelligent about that data, the faster you can help people find information they're looking for. Okay, excellent. All right, well, we're, we're going to have to kind of uh, wrap it up on that point, but I think that, that, that was exactly right. I think we're, we're seeing that in, in, in some of the customers that we work with as well. So uh, leverage the social, yeah. Focus on authentic content, get it out there in forms that, that people are willing to digest. Yes? Absolutely correct. Okay. All right. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. This has been Donald Klein here with Peter Schmales, uh, former chief marketeer at Datos.io with Cube Conversations.